Hi and welcome students. In this video I'll be covering PowerPoint 2016 and showing you how to format your objects. Let's get started. So you'll see that in this presentation, I'm going to go to slide 2, you'll see that I have a text box right here. Whenever you click inside of a text box, you'll notice that the sizing handles appear at the corners and sides. You'll also notice that a dotted border goes all the way around the rectangle that you've selected. If you click on that dotted border, that's what's called selecting your placeholder. A lot of the changes and formatting tips that I'm going to give you in this video require this step, so go ahead and get in the habit of clicking this placeholder whenever you want to change not only the text inside or format the shape itself. You'll also notice that when you do that, the Drawing Tools Format tab appears and you can then click in the Drawing Tools Format tab and go to the Shape Styles group. And the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to change the color of this shape. You'll notice that it's pretty dark blue. I'm gonna change it to a lighter blue to make it a little bit easier to read. And so if I click right here on the Shape Fill button, I could then change it to say this color right here, blue, accent one, lighter 80%. That makes it easier to read since the te text is dark. All right, the next thing that I can do is I could change the thickness of this border on the outside, and we could do that with this shape outline button still within our shape styles group. I click on that, and I could either change the border color right up here or the outline color, and I could also change the weight, which is the thickness of that border. I'm gonna reduce it from three point to one point, and now you can see the difference when I click away. All right, so this slide is already looking better. Now the next thing that we're going to learn how to do in this tutorial is use the eyedropper tool. And the eyedropper tool is really, really a nice tool in PowerPoint because it allows you to perfectly match colors from a picture. So let's say that I wanted to change the text inside of here. All right, and I want to change the text color. Well, the first thing that I need to do is click inside of the text box and then once again, click on the placeholder. Now any color changes that I make will be applied to all of the text within this text box, in this case at Sensation Park. Now what I'm going to do is I want the text color to be this shade of blue from the picture. Okay, This is really good when you want to say batch a company logo. If you wanted to perfectly match the color of your company logo for a PowerPoint presentation, you can do it right here. And the way that we do that is we go to the Home tab and then in the Font group you go to the Font Color arrow and you click on that and then right down at the bottom there's this tool called eyedropper and eyedropper will perfectly match the color of whatever you choose so in this case I'm going to click on eyedropper and you'll see that as I as I hover over different parts of the ferris wheel it matches the color of the part that I'm currently hovering over so in this case I'm going to go right up here to the top right and choose this blue color watch what happens to my text when I click this it's going to change from black to blue. Okay, so not much of a change there. It's still a dark color, but we, we get the point. You can change it to any color that you like. All right, so that's good. Now what we're going to do is, I, let's say I like that color and I want to use it on slide five, and I want to use it right here where it says prevent heat stroke during the hot summer season. I'm going to click inside of that text box, click the placeholder, and then I'm going to go to the home tab, font group, click the font color arrow, and luckily this time I don't need to use the eyedropper tool to go back to that picture of the ferris wheel and get the blue color. Instead, this time it's right down here in my recent colors. And I see it right there, dark blue. I click it and now that's been applied. So the eyedropper tool is really, really useful for matching those colors. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna look at slide three. Slide three is right over here. And we're going to edit some of these shapes down here. And we're gonna apply shape styles. Now you can tell that these shapes, they haven't really been styled too, uh, too much at all right now. But this right here is a text box. And as I said before, I can click in the text box, click on the placeholder, and then go to the Drawing Tools Format tab to make shape styles changes. Now, shape fill, outline, and effect can all be changed individually, but uh, Microsoft also puts in some preset ones within this gallery right over here. And I could, I could see about six of them right here, but if I go right here to the bottom right of it, now this is going to allow me to hit the more button. And when I click this more button, you're going to see that, oh wow, we have a lot of different ones that we could actually choose from. And so I'm going to choose this one right down here, which is intense effect red accent four. All right, I click that, looks good. This could also be applied right over here on this shape as well. This one's a stop sign. so. Well, it's a stop sign, it should probably be all capitalized. I'm gonna do that right now. 
Oh, caps lock, there we go. And I want it to look more like a stop sign, so I'm going to click on the placeholder. And then I'm going to go to the Home tab, or sorry, the Drawing Tools Format tab, the Shape Styles group, click this More button, and once again choose this red color. There we go. So now that that red color is selected, this looks a lot better. Okay, I got this blue one right here with the intense blue effect. If, sta if safety is questioned, stopped. All right, so as soon as uh, our reader sees this, it brings attention to it because of those um, intense shape styles. All right, so hopefully that has helped with that. Now what we're going to do is apply um, apply a shape and picture effect. All right, so let's go back to slide one. And you can see that slide one has a picture on it right here. And this picture has a lot of dark edges around it, and they're very hard edges. You can tell right where the picture begins and right where the picture ends. Now, unless you're using a transparent image, um, you're probably going to want to soften the edges or add a border around pictures like this on your presentation so it doesn't just look like you slapped a picture right on top of your slide. So to do this, I'm going to go to the Picture Tools Format tab. Again, I select the picture first. And then I'm going to go to the Picture Styles group, and I'm going to go right over here to Picture Effects. And we're going to look at some of these uh, visual effects um, throughout this video and kind of check out some of the different options that we have. So Picture Effects is right here, and if I hover over uh, Soft Edges and I click on it, I could then kind of soften the edges. I'm going to do about 10 points just to show you what this looks like. And so you'll see that the picture size does not change, but the amount of softness around the edges has actually increased. So basically, it kind of just brushes away the very hard edges around the uh, around the edge of each uh, corner, okay, and side. So there we go. So that gives it a better look. Now it doesn't look like I just pasted a picture on top of this page, but rather it kind of looks a little bit more uh, flush with the background. So that's applying your shape and pictures effects. So let's uh, take a look at another option that we have for picture effects, and that's applying a bevel. And the way that I'm going to do that is on this text box, I'm going to click inside of here, click on the placeholder, go to the Drawing Tools Format tab, and then you'll see right over here is the Shape Styles group, and there's our shape effects. Another option, as I said, is Bevel. If you click on that, you can look at all these different effects that they can apply. These pop up as you hover over them, so you can take a look at a couple of these. They give it a nice 3D look. So I'm going to click on Art Deco, which is the bottom right one, and I'll click away and zoom in so you guys can see what it looks like. So again, a nice 3D look is never really a bad thing on your slides. So that's what that one did. Alright, so the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to take a look at slide 5. So if you take a look at this one, you see this picture kind of looks like, again, it was just copy and pasted on. Another thing that you can do to avoid that look is to add a glow effect to your uh, picture. And so I'm going to go to the Picture Tools Format tab, the Picture Styles group, and if I go to Picture Effects right here and go to Glow, now I could add in a different color glow. Since it's uh, water, I'm going to add a blue 8-point glow on this one. And you can see that the glow effect, it's kind of a neat one because it shows you right here kind of a darker glow right on the edge, and then it fades out. It's kind of like a gradient into uh, transparency. So uh, that one looks good. Alright, so now we're going to uh, take a look at duplicating objects, and a lot of people don't know that you can do this, they instead do a copy-paste, but there is a duplication option here in PowerPoint. And so I'm going to click on this picture of the Ferris wheel, and then I'm going to do Control D as in duplicate. So Control D. And that's going to create a duplicate. So very, very easy to do. That's how you can duplicate any object inside of PowerPoint. Now what we're going to learn is how to align and distribute these objects relative to the slide. So let's say that I have these two pictures of the Ferris wheel and I wanted to have them both be left aligned and then distribute uh, vertically. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to click on this first one so that it's selected, hold down control on my mouse, click on the other one. Now they're both selected, I can tell because they both have sizing handles around them. And now what we could do is go to the, to the draw, uh, Picture Tools Format tab arrange group and go to this button right here align and uh, if I want to align them to the slide meaning the rectangle that goes around our entire slide then I choose this option if I wanted to align them to each other I'm going to choose align selected objects okay so on this one align to slide is fine and I'm going to do align left 
notice that they're now both aligned to the left side of the slide. One more time just to prove this point, they're not going to be aligned to each other. If I do a line left, they're going to be aligned to the slide. Okay, So one more time just to bring it home. There we go. Alright, so now notice that there's room at the top and room at the bottom. If I want all of that, if I want one photo to go to the very top of the slide, one to go to the very bottom, I then need to go to align and go to distribute vertically. And now you can see what that looks like. Now the pictures do over, overlap a little bit in this case and that's fine because remember from our earlier task we could actually soften those edges so that they don't quite have uh, that effect. And so if I go to picture effects and I go to soft edges, you can see as I hover over different ones, there we go. Now it's just two pictures that are kind of faded out, right? So now it doesn't look like they clash with each other. And so that's how we do that. Okay, now we're going to learn how to uh, align objects with each other. And so I'm going to use slide three for this one. And I'm going to use these three objects. So I'll click on the first one, hold down control, and click on the other two. All right, so we've got these ones selected. And so now what we're going to do is I'm going to go to the um, uh, Drawing Tools Format tab, the Arrange group, and here's that Align button. And now this time we're going to do Align Selected Objects, which is this one right here. Okay, And this means that the objects are going to be aligned to each other rather than to the slide. Okay, And so uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to distribute them horizontally. Okay, And I want you to notice something here distribute horizontally. Notice there was no change. That's because they were already perfect before. But what happens, okay, I'm going to deselect them. If let's say stop sign is way out there, okay, and let's say that safety is question is like that. Okay, so notice that there's more of a gap between these two. If I select these three and now I distribute these three horizontally, watch what happens. Now they are perfectly distributed between each other, meaning the space in between these two is exactly the same as the space in between those two. Okay. Now what I could do is if I wanted to align them perfectly in the center of the slide at this point, I could go align to slide. Okay. And now I could do align center. Oh, and what did that do? Well, that just put all three of them in the center. Okay, so what I'm going to show you is instead of doing it that way, we're going to hold down shift on our keyboard. That allows us to only shift left and right, no up and down. And then I'm going to put them right in the center of the slide. And so when we get there, it'll show us a little bit of a guide. And there we go. Okay, so that's how we distribute those horizontally. So finally, the last thing that I wanted to show you guys is how to group an object. And so if I go to the Drawing Tools Format tab, Arrange Group, and I go to this button right here, Group, that's going to turn all three of those into one. Okay, and now if I try to uh, center on the page, Align Center, you're going to see it moves them perfectly to the center. Okay, so again, when it's three objects, they're all going to combine in the middle, but when it's one, if I wanted them to be perfectly in the center, I could do just like that as long as they're grouped. So that's one of the benefits to grouping. Last thing I want to go over is ungrouping, which is right here in the group button, and we go to ungroup, and now they're all individual objects again. So I hope this video was helpful for you. I know we covered a lot in it, so um, if it was helpful for you, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I really do appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day.